Um, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Brandon Smith, and I just celebrated my 42nd birthday last week. But when I was diagnosed with stage four melanoma uh, 12 years ago, when I had a mole removed from the back of my neck, I didn't think I was going to see my 31st birthday, let alone my 32nd, when my twins were born. Uh, I was first diagnosed with stage four melanoma back in November of 2010. And back then I didn't have any support with my family and friends in the sense that um, going to appointments and everything, I was doing it all on my own. I don't know if people were busy or whatever, but um, I had the initial tear session with my parents uh, when I walked in from the clinic. But going to the doctors and trying to understand and, and process all this in my head was very overwhelming back then. And I actually was offered immunotherapy um, back then, but I didn't know anything about it. And so... Like I, w I was scared and uh, for years, four years went by um, and all they did was do blood tests to monitor um, to see if like the cancer has come back. And then after four years, um, I thought I'd beaten cancer. Um, when my twins were about five years old, uh, cancer wasn't done yet. In the fall of uh, 2017, I developed a lump on the back of my head and I couldn't figure out what it was. I had surgery to open it up and it turned out that my stage four melanoma actually metastases and spread all over my body. One of the worst things about hearing that you have cancer is hearing that you have it for a second time and oh, by the way, it's now spread all over your body. So, um, so I, I went back to my doctor and I just, I looked at him and I said, you know what, I got to do what I got to do. So I, um, sorry, I'm <laughs> sure I knew it. I've never done a webinar before, by the way. So I'm trying to get the points out without forgetting anything. I went back to my doctor and um, he was explaining to me all the different um, all the different immunotherapies and he, he did explain to me the the, BRA, the BRAF uh, gene tests, um, radiations, and it was still very overwhelming. And the question did come up in one of our appointments of like, what kind of timeline we're looking at? And he said conservatively with what I have, so it'd be three to five years. So I couldn't imagine uh, my kids being fatherless at the age of 10. So I needed to find every solution possible uh, to make sure that that didn't happen. I talked to my doctor about other treatments in Toronto and clinical trials. And one day I just typed in the Google search melanoma clinical trials in Canada. And like Stephen mentioned before, I did find that website that's the Canadian cancer trials.ca. And once I was on the site, I was able to re refine my search to uh, gear towards melanoma. Um, I found this promising trial um, where they were in the final stages of uh, and looking for participants uh, to put uh, to receive the two immunotherapies together, and that was the um, the ipilimumab and the nevolumab that Dr. Sung was talking about earlier, and I wanted to see if I can do those clinical trials. And when I went to Toronto, they, they already told me that the trials were already um, approved and they were doing that treatment in Windsor for the last three months. 
in my hometown. I, when I talked to the nurses and that at the hospital, they explained to me the those side effects that um, the doctor was talking about earlier when it comes to the uh, the dehydration, the diarrhea, and I ended up losing 40 pounds. I was a uh, 200. 20 pounds and I went down to like 180 and you were only able to get the uh, treatment four times every three months with the two drugs together and at the time only 30 percent of the people could tolerate the um, side effects they were they were that bad but I I pushed through it and I ended up getting all four treatments and it was it was amazing because after the after the first treatment i could feel the lump on my head and it was like it was um starting to wiggle around a little bit and then uh by the fourth by the third treatment it was completely gone and that was so encouraging and so fascinating that um i could actually see the cancer being eaten or killed by my own body and my own immune system and I can't, it was, I was so hopeful and, and, and um, excited about all of this. Um, so after it's been about three years now that I've, I've had uh, those two treatments together and I am now just on the Nevo. Uh, I get the Nevo every two weeks. Um, but my doctor is very excited about my results. Um, one of the, the people that have made it through all four treatments, and I was one of the one of the first ones to do it since they only just started it in Windsor. Um, so, uh, sorry. Okay. So my current treatment, my my um, cancer has shrunk down about 60 percent and from the way it is now is that it's not going to get better and it's, it's not going to get worse so <laughs> i have to I, I have to admit when i was first approached by this i was a, a little nervous but um but i am excited about it because one of the things I like to do uh, in my storytelling and writing is to create an image. Um, but how do you create a story and an image when it comes to cancer? The greatest story is my own cancer journey. The story of fear, happiness, anxiety, depression, anger, and questions like why me? But even if you're just starting your journey or Cancer has been part of your life for a while, like mine. Just remember, like you're not alone. So, sorry, I don't have much more. Thank you so much, Brandon. We so appreciate you being here this evening and um, sharing your story with us. Um, we we really really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time and um, yeah, just being open and and sharing tonight. Thank you.